Hey yo, it's gonna be way more than air conditioning. <laughs> At 5.15 a.m. I'm out the sheets. 5.45 gotta hit the streets. 6.49 I'll bench my peak. 8.25 I'm free to eat. 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's my day job flow till I'm back in the crib. The rest of the night I'm cooking up sauce. At 5.15 I'm at it again like, man ain't nothing like me. They ain't nothing like me. They ain't nothing like me. No, that's hardly likely. Go and turn on the lights please. Maybe then you might see. They ain't nothing like me. One thing about me, I hustle. Clowns can't copy my juggle. Babe, I don't need a flex. They're gonna show off my muscle. Grind and grind and that's all day. Be the light and that's always. Shining bright in your hallway. Like 5 a.m. in the party. Brad, they call me ACE. Brother, make it look easy. They play pretend when they see me. Then DM me trying to beat me. Help me out, so demanded. Your mom ain't teach you no manners. They want your boy open handed. Bro, hear my answer at 5 15 a.m. I'm out the sheets. 5.45, gotta hit the streets. 6.49, try step so bleak. 825, 5 food to eat. 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. It's my day job flow till I'm back at 515. I'm at it again like hey. they ain't nothing like me. They ain't nothing like me. They ain't nothing like me. Now that's hardly likely. Go and turn on the lights, please. Maybe then you might see. It ain't nothing like me. It ain't nothing like me. Baby, I'm about my business. Cooking pies in my kitchen. Opposition when I slice. It's got hundred percentage. Always on, that's light work. Paperwork, how I work. No shady deals, cause my light work. So my soul better than first. Reborn with new stamina. Can't sit still on camera. Someone told me I ran your stuff to my manager. He's a fan of yours. No need to feed me. I know they see me like PGTV. I ain't even any on any beat and give them heebie jeebies. Oh, please believe me. At 515 a.m., my mouth the sheets. 545, gotta hit the streets. 649, squat the leap. 825, find food to eat. 9 a.m. to God knows when. It's my day job flows till I'm back in the crib. Every now and then, gotta take a little break. Go love and white feet, and I'm at it again, like. <laughs> AKA high grade, watch me graduate, got that fire, baby so much fire, always in the light, yes your majesty, by the way, I be moving late, think I'm at a race, put in work, a single day, even Saturdays, and by the way, I ain't new with this, I just had to wait, now we on, life flip click, we on, now it's time to play, what's up, go on, brother man, what's wrong, why you play, sashiate, in too deep, I saturate, give my all, I captivate, care too much, I'm passionate, they love it though, infatuate, new ones here, I'm glad Glad you came, my day one here, they mad you late. Opposition had to hate, they can't knock me, I'm cash as clay. Que lo que es, I say, Mr. U, and that's my name. Don't know which language I'll use, but hear what I have to say. I've been on the ground, flipping five things at a time, squeezing juice out every hour, every day. I've been on the ground, see my brain starting to rise, where you at? Baby girl, I'm on the way. See y'all know something, yeah we on the road, yeah we always on the road, if you don't know now you know, hey. yeah. So, uh, long day at work, back from 4th of July, hope y'all doing well, was good, was good, uh, y'all already know, you boy call me Ace, or just call me Ace, if y'all got called me uh, this is very interesting. Um, so I'm super hyped, super excited uh, to be interviewing my friend, super dope producer out in the East Coast, and it's 9 p.m. his time, so I don't even want to <laughs> waste too much time, but uh, everybody, please welcome the one and only J-Dot Music. Was good, man? It's good, man. It's good. <laughs> How, How's you everybody doing? How you doing? I've been doing all right, man. I've actually 
literally just waited the whole day. This is my first time actually being in front of a computer because normally I'm down here all day working on a whole bunch of music. So dang, it's been a good day though. That's beautiful. That's that's what I wish my day was. But it was equally dope. <laughs> it was a lot of a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of you know yeah. documents and emails. But uh, you know, <laughs> it it keeps me going. Um, and you had some sushi, which is dope. I haven't had dinner yet, but need to get to that. Um, but yeah, yeah man, why don't you just hit us all with a with a quick intro of yourself, where you based at, all that fun stuff, just so uh, that the people watching and afterwards could get a flavor of who you are. All right, so my producer name is J Dot Music, and I'm still kind of trying to get used to that name, low key, because I just go by like Joshua, so that's my government. Yeah. So Joshua. And uh, I'm based out in South Jersey. I'm not going to get the specifics out, but I'm um, nah, nah, like 30 minutes it. away from Philly yeah. and about an hour and 30 minutes away from New York. I love being in this part. I grew up in Denver, Colorado, though. A lot of people don't really know that. Yeah. So yeah. it's almost like both of us, we did a little bit of a switch, right? Yeah. So you were born in the East Coast, then you moved out West, and... I was actually born in the East Coast, but then I lived the majority of my life out West, and then I moved back over to the East, so. Uh, well, what was it like, uh, Denver, Colorado? I ain't never been. Oh, uh, man. So, recently I've been talking to a lot of my guys back in Denver now, so it's all love with them, but it wasn't really, like, my cup of tea to keep it a buck with you, but it's a good place to raise a family, it's a good place for like trying to get away from like all the craziness and stuff like that. I mean, every, every place has its flaws, but Denver felt like it didn't really have that many flaws, but it didn't have that many black people and not a lot of people that was doing hip hop music the way I wanted to do it. Mm. So I thought moving back to where I was born in Philly would have been a lot better. And I went to temple. So it helped out. And then when my parents got jobs out in Jersey, I was like, I'm moving in with y'all because ah. I don't have to pay no rent. Oh. So, <laughs> so you you don't pay no rent right now? How do you? Oh, man. What do you, what do you what do you what do you bring to the table as as an adult? Just your your love and, and affection. Listen, I'm an only child, and I wasn't supposed to be here. So the fact that ooh, uh, ooh God's grace. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a miracle child, man. Okay. So yeah. But I do contribute a lot to the family, though. Okay. They would, but it's not so. an obligation. Nah, it's not an obligation. Okay, because, Brendan, you already know in a Jamaican household, it's an obligation as soon as you pass 13. It's just, yes. yeah, where's the, my yep. first job? I uh, <laughs> I was 14, and I, I was getting, like, $300 a month or $400 a <laughs> month, and I was like, ooh, like, finally the Jordans that I've been waiting for my whole life, and my mom took it all, threw it straight to the light, just the whole summer. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I was like, you're about to learn what it means to be alive. For real though, absolutely, absolutely. So how did you, you, you were talking about uh, Denver, Colorado and, and the desire to make music in the way that you wanted. Um, how did you even get into music production? Like, what was that like? So that's an interesting story. So shout out to my man, Evan Ford, him and his sister, Aris Ford, they doing big things out in the CHA slash gospel world. But his dad had Pro Tools and Reason. Okay. And when we were like 12 and 13, we just wanted to go in the studio and just like mess around because I've already I was already playing instruments like my grandfather gave me drum lessons at two years old because he saw me banging on pots and pans in the kitchen. And he was like, all right, let's let's tune this in. Give yeah. him some drum lessons. That didn't work out really all that well. But. <laughs> and then I taught myself how to play guitar. Dang. I taught myself Dang. how to play the keys. Dang. And Dang. this is my main instrument now. I play a bass guitar, so that's my main instrument. So I was working at that, playing at that for school. In How middle old school. were you when you were te like self-teaching these instruments? So I was six when I played guitar. Dang. I was eight when I started playing keys. And because I was already playing guitar at my middle school, I couldn't play guitar. And they told me that I would have to pick up the bass, which is pretty much the last four strings of the guitar. So I'm like, okay, bet we can work with it. But the bass and guitar are mad different, man. I'm I mean, like, tell, 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 explain that to somebody that doesn't understand the difference between. So the think, and the so playing the guitar is like riding 
a regular sports sedan car. Okay. Playing the bass is like driving a bus. Ah, ah, okay, okay. I can feel, I never driven a bus before, but I imagine it's a little slower, wider. <laughs> it takes a lot to get it to turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. But, yeah, back to the production story, though. Uh, I just started messing around in Reason, and at that time, we wanted to rap. I think that's like most producers. They start <laughs> off wanting to try to rap, and then they realize, this actually, I actually like this a lot better than rapping. So I just stuck <laughs> with producing. So I've had Reason since I was 13, and then just used it ever since. I still use it to this day. Okay. I'm probably okay. one of the faithful few that use it for hip-hop, but it works it Did worked on all our albums not so. an fl studio kind of guy mm -hmm. kind i of have guy. logic and i just started using logic when i was teaching at a uh high school recently we were using logic but i've been a reason guy and then we use pro tools and temple so i'm a pro tools guy as well so, but i like reason the best okay okay got you uh what was your rap name tell me real quick uh yeah i don't even remember that yeah Dang. I think it was you oh, you know what? Name. You know what? You know what? So in 2015, I dropped a rap song every Wednesday for an entire year. I did 52 tracks, and they're all gone. They're nowhere. <laughs> uh, you ain't got. I you don't got the stems. You don't got the wave those, files. Those, I deleted them from my hard drive. Ah, uh, you deleted them from your life. <laughs> I made I made sure that them Jones was very dead and would never come back to life. That's cool. But I was actually using my producer name. And ah. that and my producer name, I was really like it was something corny. It was like something Christian because I like Christian rap and stuff like that. So yeah, it was like yeah. JC Soldier. I'm like, now nah, we can't do that. Ah. Especially when you, especially when you about to be 19 at the time. I was like, yo, we gotta find something else. So my <laughs> cousin my cousin was like, yo. Why don't you just do J. Dot music? And even though it wasn't something that I really enjoyed at the time, I'm like, well, this works because my middle name does start with a D, so we can do it like that. Exactly. Might as well just keep it like that. Yeah. It's interesting that you have the dot, like, spelt out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you could have just been J. Music. You're like, nah, like, J. Yeah. Dot. Yes. And especially because... My last name is Heath. So there's a lot of Joshua Heaths that do music. So I couldn't use my original name. Dang. So I had to find something that would have worked. Touche. Touche. Uh, what is your... So going back to uh, what you were talking about, Reason, and the fact that you're one of like 10 people in the world that still use it, what is your beat making process now? And how has that evolved over time? Oh, man. It evolved a lot. So when I first started, I was literally playing everything out. And when you first start off, you normally start off by like remaking new beats or something like that, or remaking old beats that you've heard. Yeah. So I was remaking a lot of like Nas uh, beats from the It Was Written album. I was redoing a whole bunch of beats from like, you know, people that I've heard. But definitely, I definitely remember those old Nas beats and trash. But anyway, we just keep. It <laughs> we all gotta start somewhere. I mean, it we was, all gotta like, start somewhere. Yeah, and it then, reminds me. Like, I feel like all artists start with imitating other things. You know what I mean? Like, my first thing was uh, uh, drawing, like illustrating, and you know, and like my first drawings were literally just like, "Yo, let me recreate Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny," and you know what I mean? Right. And then like once mm -hmm. I started getting the hang of that, and you know, Dragon Ball Z, then it was like, "All right, let me take like additional thoughts in my brain and like." do some stuff that ain't nobody never seen before. And it sounds like for you in production, that's how it started off. It was like, yo, let me just like try to get this Nas beat down. Yep. And then, cause I've, I was actually pretty proficient at playing keys. So I was able to make different melodies and stuff like that. But I didn't really start sampling records until 2013. So it was like my senior year in high school. Okay. Once I realized how to make, how, once I started realizing how to like chop samples up. Yeah. And it was a wrap after that. I was trying to find literally everything. Like at the time, my parents had all these CDs and we have like all the, there's a crate of albums over here. I don't know if you can see, like, let me, I can't let see me nothing. Show me something. Let me, let, hold on, let me pull out, let me pull out Lil Jim. Let me pull out Lil Jim though. Damn, we got to crate dig with J-Dot. Got the crate dig. We got, uh, <laughs> hold on, man. This is crazy. 
So, uh, you know them. I got to do one for the people, them. I got Pato Benton. Whoop! Bullet! <laughs> and then I got a... You got the Barge album. Wow, the Barge, the Barge. <laughs> let me find, let me find one more for the culture. But the album is gone. What? <laughs> but but the album is <laughs> that, that good that, that you gotta keep the cover. You can't even yeah. like. <laughs> you just have to keep the old cover, man. That's it. I don't have the album. That's it's it. Gone. <laughs> It that's like that's gone. like when the uh that's like when you have like the VHS but you can't even play the VHS because it skips like yep. right in the middle or in the front or whatever like you but you can't throw it away it's it's Moonwalker like <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta keep you gotta keep the classics man that's but what's up Dang. the only issue was I didn't really have a turntable that could connect to my computer so I would always just jack stuff off of YouTube yeah we we should probably yeah we probably should keep that between us. <laughs> Just like, oh uh, no, we 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 gonna be all right, man. All right, all right. All right. Uh, so what? So you so then you went from like I imitation as a form yeah. of flattery, uh -huh. then I dibble dabble into my own sounds. Then it was like, oh snap, I can sample, and I'm about to be on the East Coast, and now mm -hmm. I'm about to be an East Coast producer. Like was that? Well, I was. Was that the joke? I love, or did I you love sound like East, East Coast, Coast even in Denver? I I was East Coast, and when I was in Denver, the mindset was Philly. When I was in seventh grade, okay. From okay. seventh grade on, I'm like, I'm going back east. Yeah. So I would yeah. listen to all the East Coast rappers. That was what I was influenced as. But before, it was all Louisiana rappers. So uh, now I go uh, like, so like, even though he about to go to jail for like Hurricane Chris, I was listening to him a lot. Okay. I don't know why, but he's probably no. Nah, he was the only rapper that I can actually spit word for word his bars because I'm terrible. I'm terrible at lyric retention. Yeah. Like, I, I barely even know what Mary Had a Little Lamb goes. Like, I'm that I feel that. bad. But A Bay Bay was really like, that yes. caught you like yes. by the heart. A Bay Bay and the hand clap, because the hand clap was a little bit simple. I, even, I, I thought he only had one song. So, right I, there, <laughs> you've proven to me you're Hurricane Chris Stan. <laughs> I'm not even going. I wanted the. That's why I wanted my hair long. Man. Ah, see, because for me, it was Chris. Michael Jackson, but for you, it was Hurricane wow. Chris. Yeah, man. It was actually, it was Mellow and AI because they were playing for the Nuggets. Fair. It was Snoop Dogg, actually, but yeah. I was on the East Coast and uh, I used to get beat up for saying Snoop Dogg was my favorite rapper. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. But we, and Denver's a transient city, too. So it's not often that you find many people from Denver that live, like, that are actually from Denver. Yeah. That makes so yeah. people that live in that live there aren't necessarily from there. So you had a lot of people that would pull from Cali references. So I would, even though it was like boom bap music or stuff like that, I would still listen to the Dre's and the Snoops and the Ice Cubes and the DJ Quicks and stuff like that. Hmm. So I would listen to those type of influences, and I would easily do that, like playing synth aux, West Coast synth aux, and West Coast bass lines for me isn't that difficult yeah. because I grew up. So that wasn't all that hard to try to do. Interesting. But, was there yeah. a, was there a, any like local Denver artists that were just like popping that you chose to ignore? But like, had you really been like all about like the Nuggets, you would have really cared about them. Uh man, not Denver per se. Okay. I mean, but like if you Wyoming? really, nah, like Colorado Springs had a lot of great rappers. Oh, okay. A lot of great rappers. I'll shout them out too. Like Mr. J, I forgot his last name because I can't say it, but he was dope. Okay. My guy Ray J. Moses is dope. And uh, Bridge B, he was a battle rapper as well. He's pretty dope as well. So Colorado Springs had the rappers. Okay. But Denver, it can be a hit or miss. But I will say this though India Irie, born in Denver. Hey, okay. Because her dad played for the Nuggets. So. Ah. Uh... There's always there's always something. Mm -hmm. uh, always something. And so then you go from I'm a sampler, I'm in the East Coast now, like then how did it evolve? And and what I really want to get to is okay, I'm I'm college sampler and now like everything that I do is like black something. Okay. Black tape, so, black Knox, black Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if people know that like that's like your thing. And I feel like at one point it was something not black. It was like 
I don't know, blue or something. I don't know. You you go you go through like seasons and like you haven't left yeah. black season in a while, which is why fun fact for those that are watching or will watch, uh, like I like part of the the part of the reason why I named the song that we did on Airplane Mode Black Season was because literally all the <laughs> all the beats that I got from J Dot were like named Black something Black something Black something. So then you sent me a beat that was like black sax fifth or whatever yeah and i was, was just called, like what was it called black island sax fifth avenue Fam. i don't know why it was that long i don't know either i don't i was upset with you because normally like <laughs> normally your titling would be so good like i could get something from it but this one i was like fam this is just this it's just black everything black season that's that's it <laughs> like, that was, but like right and so just even like thinking about how we even make music together it's fun but like so yeah, like what, like how did you get from? Because you're in like a Picasso mode right now, where like, you know, he was in his blue phase and da 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 da. So like, bring us from college to now. Okay, so at college, that's when I got plugged into my church, and they didn't have a bass player. Now it was a little wild because between eighth grade and freshman year in college, I didn't even pick up my bass because I was trying to play basketball so much. Mm. Then when I got hurt from there, I picked the bass back up, but I was still mad rusty. But when I went to the church and they saw that there were no bass players, I was like, I can help out. I may be a little bit rusty, but I know I can play some of these notes. I can, like, I hear things. I'm very good when it comes to like, um, you know, playing things by ear. So I play things by ear, I could pick it up quick. Okay. So 2014, so like 2016, I got bass lessons and then I was able to join the church and play bass. Mm. And like that whole summer of 2015, I just played every single week. And that's how I was able to get better as well as the lessons. And I still go to my guy for lessons now. Shout out Dave Hackley. I'm not sure if you're watching this, but, you know, I'll see you tomorrow. But uh, yeah, <laughs> man, it's like just working through bass stuff. And then as I started becoming stronger playing the bass then i would add that into my production uh, so i would still be sampling but now like late 2015 early 2016 we started getting in the sample packs and now i have control as far as like manipulating how these sounds work and then i can also add like auxiliary pads or some like sounds in there as well and also beefing up my drum sounds as well so okay. just adding that all together I wanted to make my own sound, but then 2016 comes around and our current president. That's why everything is named black. Cause uh, once that happened, everybody on my timeline just started becoming woke out of nowhere. <laughs> and before that, you know, like right now we're going through all the little racial tensions. Yeah. Well, it happened. It's kind of like 2016, 2016 again. It happened like it happened in 2016, so that's when everybody was starting to become like extra black. I see. And then when our president came through, then it just went off the deep end. Gotcha. So it actually started as like a joke. Most things that I do and I'll stick to start off as a joke. So at first I was just like, okay, because I like the fact that everybody was going black, but they were going too hard and it wasn't unredeemed. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, y'all annoying. Let me just name everything black and see how y'all like me now after this. So I was naming everything, literally just black this, black that. I On my IG stories, I was like, because it was around Christmas time. Because yeah. in our house, we have a black Santa. We have a black Jesus, a black <laughs> angels. We have all of that in the crib. We have all of that in the crib. I was yeah. doing laundry, and I was just doing my black clothes. Yeah. So that's how everything started. But also, a lot of the music at the time had a lot of dark undertones to it. Mm. So black fit the description. I see. But at the end of the day, then I was like, hmm. This is actually good for organizational stuff because then I can just pick something from black and it's all in alphabetical order when I put it into my uh, hard drive and exactly. stuff like that. Yeah. So when I was listening to it, I'm like, OK, I remember this from this season. I, or I remember it because even black season got seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you'll uh, graduate from a black season to a different 
Red season? I don't know. I mean, nah, nah, I don't like red that much, even though I'm wearing red right now. I like red. It's my favorite color. Don't worry about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Nah, but black. (laughs) I don't get royalties off black. red, Black, red, and green together. Fire. Fire. Oh, oh. And yellow. And yellow, too. Add that. Man, I just, you would think it's just foam, but it's a message in every business meeting I have. (laughs) <laughs> but cool all right so then dang what was the what was the first beat that you made that was black it actually was in 20 it was actually in 2012 so the first beat that i made that had the black title in it was called black magic and it was used on somebody's album back in denver i don't even know what it, like what really all came up about it but okay that was the first one it was called black magic and then i went back in 2016 and made a beat called black girl magic but i never knew that it was going to be something that would even spark up a whole thing yeah and then it started black angels was the first beat that really kicked everything off and then after that it went black bear what else was there i I think it's a joke it really like he'll send me a whole beat pack of black I'm just yes. like, I, you know, not yes. not feeling this black today. I'm <laughs> definitely that, but you know, it's just, that's literally it. <laughs> that, and I think that's another thing too. Like when other artists see my B titles, they'll know who I am. Yeah. Because if I cool. just give them like some generic, that's branding. Like, oh, okay. So yeah, that's that's like branding for me. Yeah. If you keeping everything black, same with the B tape. I was just like, since I already do this with my mm. beats, I'm rather just do it with B tape. Yep. So Black Tape 2008, which is super dope. For those that don't know, he uh, basically takes some super dope samples uh, from the early 2000s and mm-hmm. basically just throws his own his his own beat underneath it. So we got was it uh, uh, Aaliyah? We got an Aaliyah joint on there. Got Aaliyah got an Outcast one yep. on there. Yep. We got a Lupe Fiasco one on there. That one's but dope. the 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 best one that I've seen on my SoundCloud because I put a few of them on SoundCloud before I dropped it. Mm. The Brandy one. That one's fire. That one's fire. I I, I like that one, but my key is the Carrie Hilson one. Really? So that's the Black Energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. Why why is that your favorite over the Brandy? Because I love the I'll, that one's I, smooth. No, I love the Brandy too, but the the fact is something different. Okay. Like, people expect me to do more of the boom bap stuff or, like, the trap stuff. That one is more like your slower dance hall type Uh, situation. And that's a direction where I want to start going and start tapping into a little bit more. Okay. So even if y'all weren't a fan of Carrie Hilson, like, you mix those two together and just the way the whole vibe was set. It's a completely different vibe. Yeah. It's a completely different vibe. That's that's I, I was working on that for like two years. Oh dang. Indirectly. How long does it take you to actually like make music? Like a beat? Oh, it depends. It depends. So how many beats I'll make in a day, it depends. So there'll be days where I'll make like two beats. There'll be days where I'll make nine. It all depends on the day and how it goes. Okay. But every month I try to make at least twenty to twenty five beats a month. I see. Okay. That's dope. <laughs> that makes sense. Why? Uh, we'll we'll get to it a little bit later. But that's why there'll be days I'll just be like, "Yo, man, <laughs> I'm I'm hungry," and then he'll just <laughs> just yep. like a whole like slew of stuff. That's how yep. we mess around and make projects out of nowhere. So that exactly. that, that definitely makes sense. Exactly. Um, so uh, a few. So one one question uh, that folks want me to ask you. Um, how does your faith play a role in how you make music or see yourself as a producer? Shout out to Chelsea. She specifically asked this question. Shout out to Chelsea. Um, it is everything that I do, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like everything, I just have to make sure that if I do something, it's always out of just any way perfection. Like everything that I do is a gift from the Lord. Anything that we, like, if we're eating or drinking, we do it for the glory of God. So that's how I always look at it, even if I'm giving it to people. Because lately, at first, it was just like, I'm only going to give beats to Christian artists. 
but a Christian artist shady than the mug. <laughs> so it's like not 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 trying to put everybody underneath the whole rug like that, but let's just be honest. In a Christian rap field, not everybody's gonna be doing it full time unless you're like reach records. Mm. And they gotta have another job. Some of them may have family members that they have to support. Mm. And I get that. And for the people that are reputable as far as like doing business with, I love them to death and I'll still do business with them to the day. Mm. And then you have others that just want beats for free all the time. Like, bro, <laughs> you gotta eat too. Like, I'm not just gonna be out here unless unless you like really dope. Yeah. Like, since me and you have this type of relationship, if there was ever a moment where you know you couldn't pay for a beat right now, yeah, then it's fine. I can just send you something for free and it'd be okay. Right. But if it's like a regular dude from the block and he can't rap, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Word. Nah, but every, nah. yeah, man, everything that I do, it has to be something related to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel you. And I think that's 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 a really dope point to to call out, right? Because you already know, like I I'm in like I'm in business, I'm in the corporate world, and like there's just there's there's a way to do business above board that is glorifying to God, and I think it's very ironic when you find people that you know claim they're you know of the faith or whatever. And then act in like really shady ways that you wouldn't do at a real job. <laughs> and right. if this is a business, like why are you trying to swindle somebody that you're also saying like, oh, you know, you're my brother, da da da, and like, you know, that's, like, that's you... the killer. That's the killer. Yeah, it's like, it's like what, we what doing, makes we doing it? We doing different... it for the kingdom. Yeah, like the kingdom. Fuck the kingdom. <laughs> like the <laughs> the kingdoms. <laughs> Uh, you know, specifically says you got you gotta you gotta work. <laughs> you know what I mean, like you got the fruits of your labor are real, and you gotta like you gotta just do things right. You know, you can't you can't steal, and that's basically what that is. You like what makes your yo my brother different from the random DMs that you get every day? Like yo, bro, <laughs> let me hold son. It's like bro, what what makes that any kind of different? So I hear you. Yeah. Like if you got all these iPhones and J's and stuff like that, I'd be killing you. But you be killer. seeing that you be seeing that Christian or not? You be seeing that in like yeah, you see that everywhere. You see that everywhere. You, you, know? you be seeing like artists flex on the gram and then tell a videographer, "Yo, I don't got it." It's like, bro, what, then what is this? That's just the re up money, like, bro. The re <laughs> <laughs> said the read of money I bro. get it man all I'm saying is I get it and it's uncouth but yeah now that definitely makes sense yo so uh just keeping keeping business above board keeping it clean that definitely makes sense um yeah. yes do unto others what you want done unto you that's really it um how do you engage with your audience here goes another that's one. always been something that's been kind of difficult because it's like that's something I'm trying to pinpoint all the time because it's not just me working with a set artist, but it's also like engaging the common fan. Mm. So oftentimes I feel like it would just be something through IG stories or something like that. Or if anybody has a question, just answering as promptly as I possibly can. Mm. It's not going to be the easiest thing to do. But as far as like, how do I engage other artists? Telegram. Now, people have been using Telegram recently. You got like me on Telegram. Yeah, man. But now people are using it for like all this Forex trading scam, Ponzi scheme type stuff. And I don't know nothing about people. that. Shout outs to Brian nah. Kidd. Shout outs to J. Music. I only use Telegram because of y'all. <laughs> hey, man. Telegram is so easy. Unlimited storage. I got a whole bunch of producers that I send stuff to. I got a whole bunch of rappers I send stuff to. Okay. So it's like it's one of the easiest way for me. It's it's better for me than selling beats online on BeatStars, honestly. Dang. Because it's going directly to you. Yeah. And if you want it, then cool. And if you don't want it, that's okay. Yeah. I can continue to like shop it around until people are like, I want this. And then if they want the stems, just send it to Telegram. Yeah. And you So I engage but so I try to catch up with the artists like 
once a month or once every two months or something like that. And if it's people that I talk with closely, I try to talk with them at least uh, a few times a week. Okay. So that's how I would probably engage those people. But as far as engaging the whole audience, that's something that I'm just going to keep it a buck. That's something I need to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So those are something that I'll probably have to ask you about how you would engage your audience. For sure, for sure. You already know. Happy to talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess that kind of connects to another question, which is um, what is the hardest thing about promoting your projects? And specifically, I know we're saying projects, but I believe your first, like, we're excluding everything that you've done in the past. Your first project is, is the black tape, right? Yeah, the and first so- project was the black tape. And so what was that experience pretty, like launching, you know, your first beat tape as a, it wasn't, it was like a different kind of beat tape because you had yeah. lyrics on them, but they're, you know, whatever, they're mm-hmm. remixes, right? Like yeah, what remix. was that whole experience like launching your first project, uh, a project unique like that, you know, the rollout, all that stuff. What was that like? So I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen, but I had to drop it a lot earlier than I anticipated because my computer crashed and I thought I lost all the files. Mm-hmm. So I just went. His computer did crash. We yeah. almost didn't have working from home extended. Yeah, it, it, oh, it, it didn't have that album, man. Oh, that was a mess. <laughs> and there's a lot of beats that I have that are so good that either I'll have to remake or we'll just have to use a two track. Like there's this one single I did recently, and we had to use a two track for it. And it would have been dope if we had the stems. Yeah, to really flesh but, it out. Yeah, they'll flesh it out a little bit more, but it's all good. Though. We gonna... God's still on the throne. Yeah, God is still on the front. Amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. Wait, I so have... okay, go back to all right. So first project before, yeah, so during, had... and after launching. Go. Yeah, I had to shock drop it, so I had to make sure I even had all the songs on there. Mm. So the that's the beauty of Telegram. So it stays in the Telegram cloud. I was able to extract all of my songs from Telegram. And then I put them up on Bandcamp because if I tried to put them out on Spotify or Apple Music, it would have got flagged because of all the acapellas. Yeah, you don't, so I just you don't want, own any of those. Yeah, I don't own any of them mugs. So <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you put them up on Bandcamp and then I could give it out as a free download. And if people are actually willing to donate, then they can donate. Yep. And then there will be certain days of the year where they'll waive the band camp fees or whatever so then i'll uh, be able to june team june team they did that and then they waived the revenue shares and then they would send them off to a different company that's uh fighting for different social justices yeah so that that's dope i wish band camp would do that a little bit more often i'm not sure if they're going to continue to do that but i hope so i hope all these corporations keep that same energy in 2020 yes, they need to keep that same energy now but yeah i had to shock drop it and when I did, well, first of all, I actually had to hit up my guy, BB Sketch, for the cover art. This is actually one of his creations right now. Clean. Read re- by questions in the shape of a heart because these were the heart over hype questions. Uh, but he did. He does a lot of my stuff. He did the me really like in front the of the kind of flag. Yep. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff. So he did the cover art for my beat tape. So I asked him that before I was even about to drop the beat tape. Okay. But then... I just uploaded all the beats in order of the years that they came out. So ah, Outcast was I didn't first. Even beat that. Yep. Outcast was first because that came out in two thousand, yep. and Duro was last because it came out in two thousand nine. I see. So I put all of them in order by the years that they came out. Some okay. were, I think, some were better than others because I thought I had a two thousand three, but I didn't have a two thousand three. Um, so I was kind of missing on that one, but it's I all see. good though. Yeah. yeah. Actually, and I think I misspoke. It wasn't called 2000. It was the 2000s. It was, yeah, that was like the, the official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Black Tank 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, yeah, was, the style of the S mentally yeah. makes me think of the 8. And that's why I said 2008. It's all good, though. 2006 and 2007 were the most songs that I used in there. Because mm-hmm. at first, it was just going to be for 2006. Because yeah. that's when I started paying attention to hip-hop for real, for real, was 2006. Ah. But... Yeah, I guess. I'm on, For huh? me, it was 03. That's when I was like yeah. coming into my own. And I was like, Young Jeezy. That's, what, <laughs> that's, how, I came, <laughs> that's how I came up. No, that's real. <laughs> that's real. And I also wanted to use stuff that I knew I could edit a lot cleaner. 
Uh, like I could have used any song that I wanted to, but I needed to do this. This for my mother. Yeah, my mother don't like nothing that don't. My mother really don't like nothing that don't say Jesus on it. I listen, you know, excluding Michael Jackson and the bars, right? <laughs> yeah, excluding, excluding, excluding these albums right here. And these are mainly from my dad, so it's not. Uh, even. Yeah, that's why they're in the they're in a different room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, nah, they they on the same tip though. But my mom would listen like top forty stuff and okay. gospel, and my dad would listen to pretty. When that mean he listens to everything, he listens to everything. Uh, so okay. it doesn't matter if it's folk music, country music. He'll listen to that. So it doesn't matter. makes sense why you have like a, a versatile palette, so to speak. Yeah. Um, we need to we need to get back to how dropping the project and then we'll, well get back you to that there's a perfection of a segue because that so shout out to dwight and a few other people actually most people uh they want to know more about us man they want to know like what's it like working with me you know what I mean? like what's yeah the, do you like what's the flow uh how do you know if a sound is for me first off what's it like working with me man how do we even meet so that was interesting. I'll try to figure out how we actually met too. But That's the I only think question it was through, I gave him in advance to think about. <laughs> yeah. It was through it was through a producer out in Philly. Yeah. Cause he was working with you at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And he plugged us. And next thing you know, he wanted to have like a whole conversation with me. And at the time I was coming from church. So I was like, uh, hold on, man. I'm gonna hit you up a little bit later. <laughs> I think this was like early 2017. No, this yeah. was late 2016 or something. It was like late that. 2016, yeah. Okay. But we ended up calling and then once I realized that he from the Connecticut area yeah. and I had a lot of people in Connecticut and that he was Jamaican and I have a lot of people in my family that are Jamaican. So you know what I'm saying? We gotta get it, we gotta get it for the yard. Yeah. Um and just the whole spirit behind like this dude is energetic. I feel like he's never like sad ever. That's he's not true. always just I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> but he's just he has all the energy in the world just bouncing off the walls. I'm like, and I'm very just laid back and chill. I'm like, yo, this actually can work. <laughs> actually can work. And then I listen to the positive vibe song and I'm like, oh, we definitely can work. Yeah. Because you already had the type of style that I was going for as far as the boom bap style, but I did not know later that you would flip it up on me and you would start like doing all the trap stuff. So working with you at first was very difficult because I didn't know where your mindset was I know. as far as like sending tracks. Yeah, Cause there'll be times where I would send like all boom bad tracks. He's like, uh, I'm trying to look for trap stuff. Then I would try. And that was not my thing. Yeah. I not I asked like you, some trap, man. you went in the trap with me. Yo man, you kind of, Oh snap. Oh no! You there? Yo, you cut. You 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 need to run that back a little bit because you I missed. We gonna little. run it back. Don't even worry about it. Uh, right. <laughs> nah, I was saying um your uh uh yeah there was a whole season there was like a a weird season in, in, for me where I was like I said to myself I want to rap on trap beats because I don't yeah. but I can because mm -hmm. I can rap right. on anything. So I was like, yo, you got trap beats? And you were like, that's not what I do. I was like, that's cool. I still like you. I'm gonna go find some trap beats. And that was like, that was what, the, the 2018, uh, the day job flow whole thing. Mm -hmm. That was like an experiment for me. It was like, I dropped a song every week and yep. most of them were trap beats or whatever, whatever. But it's actually kind of- Shout out Absinapse, man. I shout out Absinapse out in Belgium. You can him on the show if you can. Huh? If you can get him on the show, yeah, 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 yeah. He's in he's in Belgium, so I want to I'm gonna have to figure out like what's the right time to like make it happen so that it's not right. four in the morning for him or seven in the morning for me. <laughs> but we'll figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. shout out that because he he reached out to me around the same time we were having this conversation, and so one thing led to another, and it was like boom, let's just. Even. What's super dope about the Day Job Flow project though is that that project is named after a song that we made in 2017 so like you so our first time working with each other and this is like the case all the time is like we usually make more music than actually comes out yep uh and so well, i sent you like 
I think I sent you the first time like six beats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we like, used... you sent me more than six, made yeah. six, put out three. Yes. Do you know what those three were? Yes, it was uh Mercury. Yeah. Which was the first time I've ever seen my music behind a music video. Hey. <laughs> it was that I was so hyped for that because that was like that to me is like what that and then uh Lake Merritt. Oh Lake Merritt. The best, the best videos I've seen come out of you. Dang. Well, I don't have that many videos, but I appreciate that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not trying to diss or nothing like that. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the presentation, especially in Lake Merritt, that was fire. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was so fire. So and you remember when I showed you how how people act when when Mercury is actually performed too? Mm -hmm. Yo, you told me you were gonna throw away Mercury. That I was gonna hard. throw away that beat because yeah. I made that beat in early 2016, and there were some rappers that were trashing that beat. I'm like, okay, that's how you feel. I'm <laughs> gonna trash. It. That's how you feel. So, yeah, literally, I was gonna throw that beat away. Dang, but... you hail married it to me, bro. I was literally in Oakland. I was on my way to the gym, like the way that I, I mean, you know, I'll write basically anywhere. I'll write in the sky, on underground, whatever. But yeah. like, I was in the gym. I was on the the treadmill, or whatever, and the beat came on. It was just so hard. I was like, bro, this is like, this is exactly what I need right now. And just making the song the way it was, you were like, okay, not what I expected, but whatever. I and so know. hearing you say like yo i love the video when you saw people performing like when i do the performing and people like do the verse with me you're like bro this is way more than i thought and from I this trash beat. it's not trash beat, though it's it's not trash anymore <laughs> like when i and then when i heard you rap over it i'm like okay this makes sense <laughs> this makes a lot of sense now so <laughs> mercury what were the other two mercury we did day job flow uh -huh. And then we did Be The Light, which was my personal favorite beat out of the pack. Yeah. I love and that. I love that. Yeah, that, that was one of my favorite beats at that time. Yeah. I mean, Be The Light. So Day Job Flow is a whole, like, I mean, that, you know, that's like a hashtag for me. That's mm -hmm. that's the, my lifestyle, right? And shout out to Shawan, who jumped on that beat, too. Shout Monday. out to Shawan, man. You know? Uh, that ended up being the the title for my 2018 mixtape. Like Deja Flow is like, and that the third verse too, I like freestyled it because I love the beat so much. I was just like, I just want to like keep having fun with it, even though I have nothing else to say. And then be the, <laughs> and then be the light is like you know the motto of like everything that I do. You know what I mean? Like be the light amidst darkness, right? Like that whole you know that's what we're called to do. That's what that's what our lives about and so that beat too what i love about that song as well is like when you hear it after the the last course or whatever because you had a homie that did like a uh like a guitar riff yep. and i was like bro yep. like i can't even rap on this like this needs to be like this guitar solo is a verse like that beat is so dope just instrumentally and for me i was like oh i really like working with j-dot because these are like these are live like you're playing the bass People are yes. playing instruments. And yes. I remember, like, that beat, it, like, took a while for me to receive because we were waiting for your homie to, like, do the solo. But once the solo came back, I was like, oh, this is, one, this is a verse. <laughs> so, like, the song literally <laughs> just plays out longer than you would think it should. But for me, like, that was important. And then, two, I was like, oh, like, he actually knows, like, he's not, you know, shout out to all my homies that use FL Studio and just, you know, hit keys. But I was like, yo, he's actually, like, picking up instruments and making these beats and that's how i knew like working with you is gonna be was gonna be dope um yeah, man. but then we skipped and 2018 we didn't make on paper it make, looks like we skipped 2018 on paper in 2018 because i don't know what was going on actually 2018 was a pretty dark year mm. for me just all the stuff that was going on as far as like personally it was just not the best year to be around me like i was getting better at all the other things instrument wise but as far as like everything else it was just whack mm -hmm. so i think that culminated into what we were doing so i got a call from flavor fest which is a christian type conference that happened that used to happen like every single year but now they were going to do it like every two years and this was going to be the second year that was going to be around but covid messed that up so you already know how that goes you know how that go yeah but they gave me an invitation 
to do a beat battle because while it was a dark year in 2018, I just got my first placement with Jared Sanders Shout and then Jared. Bizzle. And who? And Bizzle, who is uh, Bizzle, on right? that's uh, Jared's label and yeah, stuff yeah. like that with God Over Money. So I had a lot of things going on with God Over Money. And once that happened, then my name started getting a little bit more buzz and I started you know, connecting with a little bit more producers. Mm -hmm. And then they sent me an invitation to do the beat battle in Tampa. And then my guy, shout out to my guy, Sea Life on the beat. He's like my, he was my best friend, still one of my closest friends in the producer world. Yeah. He talked about it and it was like, yo, imagine if we went up against each other. So I actually <laughs> saw, I saw a beat on IG live that he was doing. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I know this sample. You shouldn't have used this. He's like, yeah, I'm going to use it for the contest. I'm like, so I took that sample and flipped it myself. Uh, uh, uh. I and don't then, know. I don't know the rules of beat battling. I don't know if that's, uh, right that's all good. Okay, the petty, so. the better. And that's why that beat was called black and petty because I took that sample. <laughs> <laughs> the Mr. UN one. Yep. Ah, that's a <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know why it was called Black and Petty, so I yeah, completely was... ignored the title. But the beat's yep. dope. Beat's fire. Yeah. That's shout out to my brother Nahum. That's his favorite song to this day that we've ever made. Like wow, he thinks he dope. thinks you from me to you, like personally. Like, thank you for making that beat. I had no idea that's why you made it though. <laughs> are you, yeah, man, are you was... killing gnats in the middle of the I had, to kill, I had to kill a spider in the middle of the whole thing, man. The devil's alive. <laughs> But yeah, man, we just, uh, I took that same sample, flipped it, added more instrumentation on it. So I had a bass line in there. It was a crazy pentatonic scale that I don't think I can play right now because I'll have to get warmed up. And like a little drum break in there. And that's all she wrote for that. Mm -hmm. So I was showing you beats that I was doing for the beat battle. Yeah. And you wanted all of them. I'm like, chill. Yeah. <laughs> I can't end them. I can't like make them yet because I'm still trying to worry about this whole beat battle thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that was in early October. And then their situation happened with your aunt. Yeah. And you're like, bro, I need to you need to feed me beats. Yeah. yeah. So I was trying to work hard. <laughs> like I was literally trying to work around the clock, trying to get something out. Yeah. And there was some stuff that I've already had in the stash. So I was like, okay, I can send that out. And then there are some other things where it's like, okay, I can extend this. And then there are some other things that I had to flip over again, like uh, the young black and gifted. and gifted, the young, young, young and gifted. I forgot what it's called. Young. And gifted. No, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. That was one of those ones that like, it was called black, young and gifted. Yes. Cause I sampled the, uh, Aretha Franklin's Young Gifted in Black, and that was going to be for the beat battle. But uh, then somebody bought it. Uh, so I had to find another yeah. gospel sample. Yeah, yeah, play. yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> I was so sad. I was like, bro, please, just make it again. <laughs> yeah, man. So then you sent me Black Young and Gifted 2. <laughs> I was like, that. Yep, Young and Gifted 2, and then that was that. And that, that, that beat was a little bit of a struggle bus, too, because I was like, Yo, I don't know what key I want this to be. Because normally, whenever I get a sample, I try to switch the key okay. either up or down. And when I was showing it to you on Telegram, I kept switching it up. Yeah. And you're like, let's do all three. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was a very I was a very fragile human being during this time. <laughs> and <laughs> I was just like, bro, just send me, just send me anything like everything that you were sending me was just so sonically dope and like i like i couldn't overthink you know what i mean like there i didn't i didn't feel like i had the luxury to be like oh well maybe like d or c or whatever whatever and so when you were like i don't know which one to choose I'm like bruh boom <laughs> like choice made yep. and we started from c minor and went all the way up to yeah D. so that's why and, yes that's and why D. in the song the beat the octaves even change and d minor was the original key that i used that i actually played it in because uh, i had other instruments like i had an organ in there yeah bro and probably some other things in there too and we had to drop those down an octave for each key so it could work 
That's one of my but, favorite. That's one of my favorites. I mean, all I I love all of our songs. That song in in particular, I remember you sent it to me, and it was before before we because like the beat the way that it is now. Shout out to Brian Kidd, right? Like he helped us to like break it down, have the progressions and stuff like that. And you were sending in the progressions mm-hmm. as well. But I remember when you sent it to me, just as is. I think it was like whatever octave D my I'm not gonna act like I know but like it was right. just like one you know what I mean and I just wrote the song literally like in between meetings like I was just writing the song it was like 30 minutes before my next meeting wrote the whole thing uh and then was like okay you know laced it at home sent it to you and was like okay it's just one long thing <laughs> I was like very I was like whatever one long as thing rap- as rapidity rappers rapidity rap rap- and I was like here's what I hear though and like to translate that, like what, cause that's a particular instance of like, what is it like working with Call Me Ace in his most like, yes. like this probably doesn't make sense to the untrained ear. Like what was right. that so, like to be like, this is what I hear. Yeah. So at once when everything is in writing for me, it's easier. Mm. If you're just gonna tell me like, I want you to do this, 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 and this. I'm like, uh, I need to see it. So I like seeing things visually before I'll start like attacking these things. But then once you also gave me, you gave me a reference and we're not going to talk about the reference just for, so we're not going <laughs> to talk about that reference. And once, I, once, once I heard that reference, I'm like, I got you. Hmm. And then we got ready and got down cracking with it as far as like figuring out what key it needed to be in and all the different type of changes, whether you take drums out or whether you add drums in at your add different sounds in there or not so it worked out all the it worked out at the end so yeah but what was your favorite song off that airplane mode project off airplane mode man because i i love them all so uniquely and it depends on the day yeah Uh, i'd say right this second just because we talked about so many other ones i would say I mean, we talked. Look, we talked about Mr. UN. We talked about Black Season. We talked about Young and Gifted. We love them all. Shout out to uh, Servine uh, and and Jared who are on Positive Vibes too. Shout out to that's, them. That's that's my favorite one right now. And you want to know why? Because I had a. Oh yeah, because I had a, <laughs> say it. I'ma say it. <laughs> I had to force you to talk, man. Yeah, man. It's that barbecue music. It's that barbecue music. This that you have your girl in one hand and a plate of and mac and cheese. And ribs and, and mac and cheese in the other hand. This way, <laughs> bro. No lie, I'm gonna send you the text later. I had a homie a couple of days ago around Fourth of July, and he sent me that whole thing. <laughs> he was like, "This is my vibe today." <laughs> ah, bro, that was my favorite one. That was my favorite one right now because yeah. that 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 whole project to me and i mean that set the tone for you know we re-upped with working from home you know we mm-hmm. did working from home extended and you know shout outs to everybody that's been listening to to all of our projects but yes, you sir. know that yes, really sir. set the tone airplane mode for just basically what we've been able to do since i mean even 2020 vision even though that's you know it's a single facebook the um, facebook one you know but uh the next one huh Oh, the yep. next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. We're saying way too much. All I'm saying yeah. is for Airplane Mode to be what it was and to do what it did, to have your voice. It's one thing to have your tag, you know, J. Shout out to Lawrence. <laughs> J. Music is about to drop it, you know. Like, we have your tag in them, but like, it was something cooler for me to like actually hear you because you are a part of the project, right? Next thing, I'm going to need Brian Kidd to say some stuff, man, because like, he's oh, been a no, part of this. Beef. Just as, man, just as you came kid, on in 2017, kid like you don't want to talk, man. I know. Listen, but I listen. You didn't want to talk either, and you talking. So we're gonna all right, all right, we're gonna do right. a skit or something, man. <laughs> um, nah, yeah, but this is this is this is fun. I know it's like 10 p.m. about to be 10 p.m. your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to share uh, that we didn't touch on? Where can people find? Hey, man, you? if you have more time, we can still go. Listen. Uh, but if you have an hour limit, then we need to stop. I'm looking. I'm looking at uh, texts from hungry wife and realizing that Ooh. Ooh, I yes. should not make independent decisions. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Uh, so I, 
I do not have any more time, so we yes, are going to yeah. End it. End it. But what where where can people find you, man? All right. So we have Instagram. J underscore D O T music and the number four. Music with a C. With a C. S I C. Spell the whole thing. S I C. So J underscore D O T M U S I C four. Number four. Yeah. On Twitter and Instagram. And then that's probably it right now. You can follow me also on SoundCloud if you have a SoundCloud. Support the beat tape at um Bandcamp backslash you can just type in J dot music so that would be J and then hyphen capital D O T music and then if you just put in the black tape two thousands you'll be able to find it there you can download it for free if you feel like you wanna donate to it you can donate to it donate oh, appreciate it just a dollar two dollars five dollars a hundred dollars don't be sinful. Hey, if it was a hundred dollars, praise God. <laughs> but I'll be happy if it's just one dollar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. Word, man. Well, listen, this is this is a pleasure, man. Always, you already know. Uh, this sure. is didn't even feel like an interview; just felt like talking with the homies. So, but I appreciate the you making the time. Uh, hopefully, uh, people that were watching and that watch afterwards get a lot yes, of you and the way that you hustle and make moves, and you know, just learn a little thing about like. How to, how to network and build relationships that can be fruitful, not just for the short term. You're not looking for some kind of like short fix or short gain, but you're actually building something that can have long lasting value. I think that's the most important thing that you, you realize over time is so much more better than, you know, anything else that you probably see on social media. So. Real talk. It's yeah. all real. Well, I appreciate you, brethren. Uh, appreciate you, brethren. Have a good rest of the evening. And thank all y'all for watching. And have a blessed one, yo. Stay safe. Tell somebody you love them. <laughs> all right. Peace. All right. Peace. <laughs>